I just want to jump into rendering in this video to show not all the ins and outs of, of PhotoWorks, but just the general workflow that you want to use when you're doing renderings. Uh, rendering is an enormous topic that we could spend many, many hours on, uh, so I absolutely can't get into every little detail, but I just want to show the basic workflow um, for doing renderings in PhotoWorks. So, you know, here's just a sample model that we're going to use of this diving knife. Um, again, if you don't have PhotoWorks uh, in, um, active on your computer, on your SolidWorks installation, um, and the, the way to tell that is whether or not you have this PhotoWorks menu available. So, if you don't have the PhotoWorks menu up here, or the toolbar up here, you know, uh, right click on the toolbar area and see if you can select PhotoWorks to turn it on. It's this menu here. If that menu isn't there, you need to go to Tools, Add-ins, and make sure that PhotoWorks is checked on both sides here. And then you'll have PhotoWorks available to you. Okay, so if I have my model loaded up and I just, you know, don't change anything and just hit Render, we'll, uh, it'll do a quick um, rendering at the default settings, um, which will look like this, basically. Um, and, you know, it's a starting point, but just typically we, this is not what we want. Uh, the entire model is in this aluminum material. We've got, um, we've got an, an, a lighted environment. We've got this floor on there. Um, I usually start by turning a lot of that stuff off. Uh, just so that we can get to kind of a clean slate and, and get the rendering that we're actually going for instead of what uh, PhotoWorks gives us by default. So what I'm going to do, actually, let me move the, uh, I usually don't do three rows of toolbars, but the PhotoWorks toolbar is important in this case, so I want you to be able to see it. Um, in the scene, in the scene uh, command here under PhotoWorks, just to get us started, um, I'm not going to use the manager here. I'm going to go manually and and, uh, and edit some of these things. The room, we're going to turn all this off, including the floor. We don't want to see any of that stuff right now. Um, background and foreground, I'm just going to go with a plain white background. That's fine. Um, environment, we're going to say no environment. Lighting, uh, this should be fine. Okay. Um, we want to check our rendering options here. Under illumination, you need to make a decision as to whether you're doing your rendering with, with or without indirect illumination. In this case, I'm just doing a simple rendering that'll be on a white backdrop. Um, I'm not going to use indirect illumination in this case, and I'll do a separate video on, on the uses of indirect illumination, but this needs to be a conscious decision, whether or not you are using indirect illumination. If you've just kind of turned it on for the heck of it and not knowing what's going on, it's going to be very hard to control your rendering. So let's turn it off for now. Same with caustics and global illumination. One of the most important um, one of the most important options in this PhotoWorks options dialog is the anti-aliasing quality. And for when you're doing test renderings and just getting stuff set up, un unless you have a blazing fast computer, set this at medium the, to really save your sanity. Otherwise, these test renderings are going to take much too long. So we got that at medium there. So we'll apply that and close. Okay. PhotoWorks, um, so the sequence of things is to make sure that your scene, your environment is sane by turning off a lot of that stuff unless you explicitly want it on. The next thing we're going to do is set up a camera. Um, and a lot of people don't do this, and, uh, you know, this is really an important part of doing a rendering. You need to render from a camera view in order for the perspective to be right and so that you can get back to the same place easily. So I'm just orienting my, um, my model in a, in a way that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll render it in this kind of a view, like just generally this kind of an orientation. And I'm just doing that by manipulating my view here. And this is where I'm going to use it as a starting point for my camera. So over in Lights and Cameras here, I'm going to right click and say Add Camera. The camera interface is pretty simple. Basically over here, you can, you can move the camera in and out, up and down, um, roll it around and um, you see a preview of what the camera sees over here. Uh, if you want to change what the camera is pointing at, you move this red dot around. Um, but I'm actually pretty happy with it pointing right there. Um, you can change the focal length 
of the uh, of your lens. So let's let's change this to a 50 millimeter standard, actually, um, th and that'll affect what kind of perspective you get. So I changed that focal length, and I need to zoom in a bit more. That's sort of exaggerated perspective, actually. Let's see if we can let's do a th um, let's do a more 80 telephoto. It doesn't exaggerate the perspective quite so much. Let's get that. Uh, centered better over here okay all right so we've got our we've got a camera set up there and then the way you get into the you know I'm, I'm still in my working view here the way to get into the camera view to see what's going on is just to click over here or you can right click on your camera and say camera view like if I was if I choose another view to get out of my camera I can right click and say um, camera view uh, if you want to change your camera dynamically within this interface, you can unlock the camera. And then when you, mo when you move around like this, the camera is actually moving. Um, I don't typically do that, but some people like that. And then I would lock the camera again. Okay, so this is, this is how our shot is going to be composed, basically. And we are, we are in our camera view here. Okay. The next thing to do is to set up some basic lighting. The default lighting that um, you get with every SolidWorks document is usually not what you want to go with. Um, so let me get back out into this sort of a view. Uh, one useful thing here, and this is new with SolidWorks 2007, is in your view menu, you can, um, you can see the lights and cameras in the scene, which is quite useful. So if I turn on cameras there, I can actually see where my um, where my camera is with respect to the object. Um, and we can also see where the lights are. Okay. By default, um, SolidWorks gives you two directional lights and an ambient light. We don't want those for PhotoWorks. Um, and we want to turn those off, especially the ambient light. You almost never want to render with an ambient light. That's just, it's just going to wash out your image. So the way, you have to remember that turning these lights on and off in the SolidWorks interface is not the same as turning them off in the uh, PhotoWorks interface and vice versa. To, so to turn these off in PhotoWorks, the easiest thing to do is to go to your Render Manager tab here. And under Lighting, oh, it looks like I had already turned these off, actually. Um, you can right-click on each of these and check or uncheck On in PhotoWorks. So you want to turn all these three off for PhotoWorks. Uh, these are not good starting lights for, for doing rendering. Now, you don't want to necessarily turn them off over here by saying off, because then you actually, that affects how you, how you see um, in the SolidWorks interface. And if you turn all these lights off, well, it's kind of dark, right? So you may want to keep that, those on for, for the SolidWorks side, but that's up to you. I'll at least keep my ambient light on here and probably turn those off. Okay. All right. So we want to add our own lights. And I can't go over everything um, related to setting up lights in this video. But in general, you want like a strong key light coming from kind of maybe over here shooting at the object and a, a half strength fill light maybe coming in on the other side to fill in some shadows. So let me look at this. And actually, you know, I, I'm going to do my key light kind of up here shining down. Um, most of the time, if you're not doing lighting through indirect illumination, you'll use spotlights. So again, I'm just orienting myself kind of where I want the light to start. Click on Right-click on Lights and Cameras, Add Spotlight, and then we get into the Spotlight interface. The first thing to check here is Lock to Model. That means that when you rotate your scene around, the light will rotate with it. If you don't do that, then only the object will rotate and the light will stay where it is and it and can be very hard to work with. So the spotlight manipulation tools are much like the cameras. I can move this little red dot around to change where the light is pointing. I can move up here to change where the light is coming from. And I can make this the, the cone of the light smaller and bigger. And I'll just, I'll just do something like this. Okay. So I can change the color of the light. I'll just change it, keep it at white for now. Brightness is maximized. That's fine. Okay, so we'll call that our key light. And then let me just get one more. Are our lights on here? Yeah, I can see my light there. 
Um, and then let me just, uh, again, I'm not being real precise with this. It's probably going to need a fill light over here because this stuff is going to get kind of dark. So I'm getting over here, right click, add spotlight, lock to model. I'm going to turn the brightness down to about half for the fill light. I don't want it to compete with the key light. Let's see. Uh, and I'll reduce this cone. Okay, that should be fine for what we're doing at this point. Um, actually, these directional lights are bugging me. So you can actually just delete these, actually, because if we don't need them in the SolidWorks interface or in the PhotoWorks interface, you can, you can delete them. So I'll delete these so that they don't show up. Okay, so now it's probably a good time to do a test rendering, even though we haven't assigned any materials yet. So I'm going to go to camera one here. And your test render button is right here. Okay, um, That does a, a simple rendering of the object to the screen only. It's not for doing final renders at all. It's just to see what this is going to look like. And, uh, you know, there we go. Okay, uh, So it's on a white background kind of floating out in space. Uh, it's pretty obvious that we need to apply some different materials to this thing, um, especially, uh, well, the handle part. The blade is probably okay with this aluminum material, but uh, the handle needs a different material. So 